So I am pet sitting at my friend's house this week and I did not have a chance to record this intro before I got here. So um, the kitchen was the best place with the best lighting here. And I just thought since I'm in the kitchen, I might as well turn it into a, um, a cooking video because I enjoy cooking. And um, the whole thing isn't going to be a cooking video, of course. I'm going to be talking to San Antonio-based artist Raul Rene Gonzalez. I didn't know Raul before this conversation. I reached out to him just kind of like out of the blue and was extremely happy that he said yes uh, to some rando like reaching out <laughs> across the internet. And he, I really enjoyed it. Like, like not only his openness to the experience of having the conversation, but just his openness to experimentation within his art practice. There was, I feel like there was a lot of things that I really identified with in terms of just like feeling like there's still so much ahead and that in a lot of ways we're just beginning, even though we've kind of been doing it for a while in different ways. And um, being really like growth oriented. So I thought also, because a lot of his work deals with domesticity and these intimate little peaks into family life, his own and the lives of other artists that this video might be kind of appropriate. So when I was packing up to come to my friend's house, I just grabbed stuff that was in the fridge and I'm sort of making up a pasta salad with some muffaletta uh, olive relish that I got from the olive bar at Central Market. Obviously I'm not making a sandwich. The meats are a little bit different. I'm using some ham. I'm using pepperoni and some Genoa salami and some provolone and some pasta that I already cooked and then the olive relish and then I'm going to put some spinach with it and I'm just making it up as I go, which is in the spirit of Raul's practice and I think my practice too. I feel a little silly. I've never made a cooking video before, but it's kind of fun. Choppity chop, choppy. So while I was talking to Raul, he's based in San Antonio, which is also where I am, and that's the city of my birth, where I didn't plan on necessarily returning. But I'm sort of, after having many years of being a total hermit, a desire to like get out of the house more. And so this was a way for me to try to just reach out and broaden my community. All right. Pasta, pre-cooked. Just toss with a little bit of olive oil so it wouldn't get sticky. So, let's put this in there. Be sure to check the video description for information about any shows that Raul may have coming up, depending on when you watch this. He's got some stuff and I may not be updating that in perpetuity but you will at least be able to find links to follow him so that you can always know what's going on and I do encourage you to please support him and the other artists that I have talked to. My friend has some um, Meyer lemon olive oil that I'm going to try on here. Some red wine vinegar. Splash. What about that Aurora, y'all? Oh my God, I didn't get to see it, but I'm so excited. That was crazy. And I'm so, ex I am so happy for my friends who got to see it and loved all the pictures and hearing about people's experiences. One of my friend's teenage daughters was like so moved. She just like broke out in the song and was like making up lyrics about the Aurora. And that made me so happy. And we're just now 
amping up into the solar cycle. It doesn't peak until uh, 2025. All right, I'm gonna taste it. I'm gonna put a little more vinegar. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little baby spinach in there and yeah. Pasta to stuff ratio is not quite perfect, but that's okay. It's okay. Let's see how this is with the spinach. That's good. That's good, y'all. I think I first saw your work at a show uh, at Dorf in Austin. Okay. Uh, may, it might have yeah. even been like the very first show they had there. Yeah, I w yeah, I was part of their first show. Yeah, yeah, I think that maybe you've been in a couple of shows there. Um, well, I think I was part of just the one show, but then for the opening, I had I think one of my concrete works, but then they had another event where I did a performance as part of that exhibition. So that was kind of like okay, but it was like a it was like a pop up installation and performance, and then I took down that installation and then. So yeah, I've kind of had you on my radar for a little while and cool. uh, following you on on Instagram, and you just seem to have always a lot going on as I was looking through all of your work you know you have you have a lot going on with just like um being active and in, in in the art scene uh -huh. but then just like within your own body of work there's a lot going on I felt like that might be a good place to start just because sure. it'll it'll be kind of a nice flow from the talk with Carrie and okay. I, I feel like that's a point of commonality that you and I have too because I definitely feel that way like I have a lot of different styles that I work with and um and you have really embraced that and just you just had a solo show in Houston not too long ago that actually was focused on that would you mind speaking to that and how that works for you creatively and in your practice no yeah sure so like I, I feel like I didn't really start I, I guess didn't make I wasn't I wasn't making art seriously until about 2007 2008 and this while I was at University of Houston and at the time I kind of it was funny because like I remember one of the professors asking like oh, okay most of the people have been painting her for a while and I replied yes even though at the time I had only been painting for like four months like I was like I mean I had just started painting so I was really interested in learning what they were teaching I mean both my professors were uh um they uh, worked in a lot. There was a lot of abstraction. They were mostly abstract work, uh, uh, painters um, and no one was really teaching um, us like, here's a portrait. Like, this is how we paint portraits. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, so I kind of just took it upon myself while, you know, learning all this stuff from my professors, creating a lot of abstract work and including some figurative uh, stuff within that itself, too. I was at the same time kind of just teaching myself how to paint. So I, I was always working on multiple things and like, um, you know, making abstract paintings, thinking about work, but then also uh, teaching myself how to paint people and like learning, you know, uh, how to create skin tone. So I was just doing these things because I wanted to teach myself how to paint. But I think also I, I, I've had this conversation with a lot of people recently, just because of the show, you know, Houston, which was called So Many Styles, I Am a Group Show. I think that all stems from um, just my work experience. So like basically from like in my 20s to 30s my, or 20, like early 20s to mid 30s, I always had two or three jobs. Like I always had a, a full time job and a part time job or there was a while where I had three part-time jobs. And for every job that I was hired on for, they hired me for one or two things, but then they would realize, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. Let's ask him to do this and do this. So most jobs I had, I had, I was doing three or four different things for that one company, wherever I worked, um, whether it was for a grocery store, whether it was for like a a printing company. I was all, so every day I never had to do the same thing every day. I never had to sit at a desk all day. I Some days I'll be driving around the city. Some days I would be a customer service rep. Some days I would be working in, in, you know, in a warehouse. And so I feel like that just doing that for almost like a decade, I got so used to never having a day that felt the same. Yeah. Um, and so that kind of just stuck with me when making my artwork. When I make work in a large body of work, no matter what it is, after a certain point, I'm like, I'm done with this. 
I want to do something else. It could be anything else. I have this other idea. Let's go with this. I mean, I'm not, and I, I guess the way I think about it too, is I'm not always, I'm not, ma I'm never making work to fit inside a niche. I'm not trying to make work to be like, this is my thing. Um, I am just like, I have a lot of ideas and I need to get it out of, I need to get them out of me. If I don't, then what am I doing here? Like, yeah. like if, if I'm not just doing it for myself, then, then what's the point? Um, and so that's kind of how I think about it. So like right now I'm working on, I think right now I'm working on like three, three different bodies of work right now. And I'm kind of mixing some of them together, but at the same time, it just gives me, I don't know. It makes every day feel fresh. It makes every day feel exciting. I never have to, I never sit down and think like, oh, here I go making more of this, you know, more of these same things. Cause at the same time, I'm like, if I wanted to make the same thing every day as an artist, I mean, why not just go get a job where I'm doing the same thing every day? I feel like, I mean, what would be the difference? Yeah. Um, so that's kind of how I think about it. Um, yeah. 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 That I, I, I feel that, um, what you were saying about having a lot of jobs. And then when you, um, even on one particular job, you had a lot of roles that you would play. Right. I hadn't even really considered that aspect of that, that it's, I mean, I think that's true for so many people these days, like with the, the gig economy and that, yeah, we, yeah, exactly. you know, a, a lot of us do have lives like that, where we just do a lot of different things and, you know, you've kind of found a way, whether it was intentional or not, to like reflect that through your artwork that, and I know some of your, your work, your artwork actually is focused on work too. Yeah. It's a really nice metaphor and is very different, I think, than the traditional way that the art world has been working in terms of an artist finding their one style and their, mm -hmm. their little niche and their pocket of collectors. And that doesn't really reflect the reality that so many people live anymore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, I mean, and whether you're an artist making one particular style of work or like myself making a variety, it's hard either way. So, I mean, it's not yeah. like, I mean, you can make a whole bunch of the same stuff and have a hard time selling, you know, making a living off of that one style. And I can, I mean, I make a lot of stuff, but it's, it's not easy for me either. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be honest. It's a little bit more challenging um, working um, on series on various projects uh, as opposed to having consistency, because then it does become a little bit harder working with certain curators, yeah. um, gallerists, where they're just like, okay, where are you at now? I'm like, I'm the same place I've always been. Um, yeah. Just, you know, keep up. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> exactly. Um, I mean, and when you, if you're going to look at art history too, I mean, this, the, people who are not going to use the word the greats because like there's so many people who were great who were mm -hmm. totally under the radar but the people who've who've been influential you know historically did have a lot of different styles you know they had a, like a mature style certainly but they also had things going on at the same time that that weren't really um being seen and looked at and they aren't the things that maybe they're remembered for but um I, I i think it's um you know it's it's part of being a creative person and that exploration that you were talking about is is really important and it's going to be different for everyone you know mm -hmm. probably i mean if there's people out there who are making art that this doesn't resonate with and they have their kind of their one focus that's totally legit and fine mm -hmm. yeah um but i think i don't know um i mean part of this is of course like i'm asking these questions because it's reflective of things that are on my mind and in mm -hmm. my life but i also don't feel like these are things that have been really um acknowledged or discussed of late in the art world and they seem very relevant to me so do you find that you said you have several different things going on right now different bodies of work how do you when you're working on one how do you kind of get into that like 
creative mode or stylistic mode and, and not bleed over? Or is there some kind of compartmentalization that happens for you or how does that work for you? So I have this, um, it's, I have this sort of process that I have when I'm working, when I'm, when I'm trans or not transition, yeah, transitioning, pro, transitioning from one body of work to the other. And I've been doing this now for shoot, I'd say 10 years. Um, so I have multiple things going on and I often will start um, like for or like right now, I'm, I still have a, a series that I'm doing of portraits of, of parents slowly working on, but I started one of them and then I have some, um, you know, notes and stuff, printouts of stuff for, um, of other things that I'll start later. And I just kind of set it aside. Mm -hmm. um, but then after I do that or after I sort of start and stop anybody at work, I always rearrange my studio, sometimes ever so slightly, but I always do a little clean, like a, a like a like a cleanse, so to speak. Not a you know a cleanse, but like I I clean stuff up. I moved, I I move, I put stuff away, I clear things out, and then I make a new I make the space ready to work on something totally different. And I do that every single time. And then I work on that for a while. And then if I want to take a break from it, I'll put that stuff away. Maybe sometimes uh, turn the paintings where I can't see them, um, put them away. And then again, I'll rearrange a studio. If I bring back one of the pieces from a series that I started, I'll bring that out or like something that I didn't finish. I'll bring that out, get the space ready just for that. So it's like I'm always making the space ready for one body of work. Um, and then, uh, I mean, I guess that's sort of the simple way of explaining it. I always kind of just prep the space for one particular body of work. And if I'm going to switch, I will clean it again and prep for that body of work. That way I, I don't have the same materials, like just ready. I'll put up different images, like um, what's it called? Like a, like, a, like a mood wall, but like a inspiration wall, like photo, you know, uh, yeah. references and stuff. I'll, I'll switch that stuff out. And then I'll just put it, you know, the things that I, I don't need, I have like, um, I have it right here to the side. Like I have this container that just has full of paper mm -hmm. and drawings and sketches and notes. So I'll put it away in there. If I need it again, I'll take that stuff back out, put it on the wall. And then I kind of just, I mean, that's sort of the process. Um, yeah. So that way everything is always around, but it's not always like right in front of me. So I really, I can hone in on stuff by kind of putting stuff away yeah I I yeah that really gels I um I have done that too I mean I work that way I haven't I, I'm really just now sort of moving into a new studio space I've been just using this bedroom for mm -hmm. years and so it hasn't been as conducive to doing that but I have done sort of the the light version yeah. but yeah absolutely I think it's kind of like creating um creating an energy in the space mm -hmm. like it's becoming immersive so that you're you know like you said you're surrounding yourselves with like this inspiration or mood um or you know i put up studies and color studies and things like that too and photographs if i'm using photographs like anything relevant but it's just kind of like being totally surrounded by that so that even in those moments of pause like you can just sit back and just sort of casually like look at the wall and you're still just like absorbing all of that you know mm -hmm. um that makes a lot of sense to me do you mind talking about the different things that you're working on i see that one behind you and i know that you'd posted something on instagram recently yeah so that one um, behind me is still in progress and the one that i uh posted on instagram is up here hanging on the wall um so yeah i'm working on i would say right now i'm technically working on so yeah, I'm working on that, but I also have like this larger one where it's a, there's a disco ball happening here with mm -hmm. some uh, cactus. Um, and then in the background, you can kind of see back there in that corner, there's a portrait of a, a woman and a, she's holding a daughter. That That's what that is. Okay. So that's a, another, the continuation of the artist parent series. And so I, I'll get to, I, I'll talk about the that one like the artist parent series first so like a lot of those work a lot of that series i apply for grants to help um like mm -hmm. make that work so a lot of times 
I'm like, I just put that, that, that series on hold until I can find a grant that'll help me create the body of work. Um, because it's a lot of time and effort to create a lot of portraits. Um, and so I like to be able to fund them. Um, and it just makes it a lot easier. And I've been fortunate um, to have had um, the past three bodies of work where I focus on parenting or artist parents all be funded by grants. Yeah. Um, so, um, so right now, like, I recently have had uh, three grant rejections, um, but I'm I still have one more out there that I'm hoping I get because then I'll I'll use that grant and then take a whole year to create that body of work. Um, but for the meantime, I'm kind of just making work for myself. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess I'm technically making it for a, I have a um, a solo show at the end of the year in December. Um, it's at Clamplight Studios and Gallery, the space, the artist, the artist space that I um, am the current director. Um, and so it's my last year there serving as director. Um, it's just, I'm, I'm just ready to step, to just step down and just to move on. Um, but, uh, I, um, you know, I've curated, I've curated and organized a lot of exhibitions there, but I realize I've never had a solo show there. So I'm creating a whole bunch of work, um, for that solo show. And then, so this body of work is kind of inspired by, not kind of, it is inspired by a lot of things. Um, so to start, it's, um, it's, let's see, it's, it's uh, inspired by family road trips. It's in fire. It's inspired by like in the past three years, I've done a lot of um, guard like gardening in my studio. Like I have a bunch of plants off to this side over here that I've um, been taking care of. Um, I've just keep buying more and taking care of them. I've been doing a lot of landscaping around our house. So I've been, I spent a lot of, a lot of time in the dirt. And so I feel like this just more connected, just the, plants in general so i'm trying to bring that show that side of me of uh, in the work and uh in addition to those type of plants i've also been uh microdosing psilocybin mushrooms as a way to um just help me um just uh meditate and also sort of connect and i don't you i don't i don't ever use them for as like um for i guess for fun i mean well it's, everything's fun for recreational use. Yeah. yeah I kind of just use them as like, okay, let me channel this energy and let's, let's see, let's see if it's, it'll help take away some of these apprehension apprehensions and these, the self doubt. And I could just really just focus on the, these ideas that I think are fun and cool and just really just go with them. Um, so I've been thinking about thinking about that, but also the reason I started using all this pixelation is when I started this, um, like the works, the backgrounds are based off of photos that that I took last year. My wife and my two daughters and myself, we all took a road trip to uh, to Montana, a two week road trip to Montana and uh, to visit my wife's uh, dad and stepmom and also to go camping in Yellowstone. And it, this is our second trip up to Mon up to Montana. The last time we went, we didn't do Yellowstone, but it was our second trip up to Montana. And last time we took, it was like three years ago. And I remember not taking a lot of photos of just the landscapes that we saw. And so this time around, my wife did most of the driving and I took, I mean, I took a lot of photos and it was the experience. There, there was, it was, we had a lot of sort of interesting experiences just driving up there. I mean, we went from you know, obviously being in Texas, and this was like, um, I forget what month it was, but it was like the month when it was like the, well, one of the like extremely high temperatures. And so like, I remember like driving through Texas and like our dashboard said like, it was like 118 degrees outside. So like on the map, like where our car, like where we're driving, like surrounding where we're driving, you just see like, we're in like one of the worst areas in Texas to be yeah. drive to be at. It was like, extremely hot so we go through that and then once we get to colorado or yeah once we got through colorado it got really cold and then in between colorado and wyoming all of a sudden like we were driving through a whole bunch of like heavy rainstorms and the weather got cold we were driving through one part of wyoming like uh i think it was wyoming where there was like a, a tornado warning and it, mm -hmm. like on the map it said like here's the warning <laughs> and we had to drive right up it so like yeah. my wife's driving and i'm all like i'll keep an eye out like looking and then like while like going through all those different 
climates and temperature changes and sort of like extremes like the yeah like the rain like the sky was also like putting on a show like it was like like it was just changing from every state and like the colors so like I took just tons and tons of photos and the more I just look back and reflect on that trip I'm just like man it was like such an amazing like experience and uh just and just to see the sky change so much yeah and so I wanted to like reflect on that and include um, th that aspect, those aspects of the trip. So I started using photographs um, that I took from the vehicle and using those as these backgrounds. But then like, you know, when I was thinking about the trip we took, um, we also took when we were on Mon when we were in Montana, we took our kids to go see the new Super Mario Brothers movie, which was, which was really good. So that, but then I also started thinking like, oh, you know, Mario is it's kind of a funny character because like I never really thought about this honestly until maybe last year where I'm like, huh, like Mario is just he's a working class immigrant, like he always, and then he's always having to deal with really hard like a hard life. He's always having to like eat his mushroom, eat his flower to get bigger and stronger to like to overcome all these difficulties or challenges in his life. And I'm just like, dang, I can really relate to that. Yeah. I was like, that's just like me making my work about laborers and workers. I'm like, oh, that's kind of the same thing I'm talking about, but obviously in a, in a pop cultural acts aspect. So I was like, you know what, let's bring that into my work, but how am I going to bring it into work? So I just started thinking about different ways. Um, in some of my concrete pieces, I was actually using the image of Mario, but then for these, um, I started putting these pixelated large either flowers or mushrooms and uh, just thinking about how, I mean, honestly, just thinking about how we look and view um, our reality and how we can kind of like, we each have a different uh, perspective of it. We all see it differently, whether we are um, under the influence of any of anything or not. I mean, so mm -hmm. I just thought about that relationship and honestly i was thinking about i started including uh mushrooms and um and flowers just because i was thinking about how like um just today's cult youth culture um or not just youth culture but culture in general um a lot more people are microdosing versus drinking like yeah. drinking uh has gone like has gone down a lot and more people are microdosing not always for for recreational some people just want to feel happy. Some people are like, you know, it helps people with depression with, yeah. with like, yeah, it's I mean, a, there's all, there's all these for like anxiety and depression drugs. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. And that. it's, and there's a lot of medicinal uses that yeah. are like starting to be used by actual, you know, doctors. And so I just started to think about that and ways of like how I can playfully discuss that within my work, because um, I don't know. It was like, I've been thinking like, I've been making so much work about parenting. Now, what are what are people going to think when I'm just like switching over? Like, oh, here's these images of me with taking care of my daughters. Now I want to talk about mushrooms. So like, um, I don't know. I was just thinking like, how can I find that balance where it's just not, um, it doesn't come across. I don't know. It's just things that are just, been, I don't know, a ways for me to play with, the, you know, that, that sort of imagery, but also to kind of like, I don't know, tie it into all those things. I mean, to your, your final point about, like the work that you're doing, um, portraits of your family and whatnot. And I can see the one up high behind you. It looks like somebody's like changing a diaper or something. Oh yeah. That's an, yeah. That's an old one from, yeah. Me changing yeah, my it's just, daughters. Yeah. But in a way like these, this, this series is still reflective of your family, you know, because it's using the photos that you took on this from the trip, family yeah. road trip. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're not like, I have kids too, you know, it's like, no, nobody whether they have kids or not is is only playing one role in life like we have our family relationships we have um our our work relationships and we have like then our just personal interests and mm -hmm. you know i think that that's um that's fair to kind of go from one to the other and for a lot of people they look very different you know yeah. Um, I mean, you, you obviously are going to wear a different hat when you're being a father, as opposed to, I don't know, just the, the whole thing with the mushrooms and the microducing and all of that. It's like, it, it's still, it's part of your, your daily life, but it's, um, it's separate 
from that. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, yeah, totally. Yes. Yeah, I think that that's um, like hearing you talk about all of that really adds a, a, a lot of depth to everything that I've seen you doing. And I've been interested in them all sort of like, you're like, oh, what's like you said, like, oh, what's he doing now? But and from my point of view, that's like a, a positive thing. Like I like seeing when people are just like, um, like have a lot of interests and in a lot of things. And, um, but now like just, just hearing the, you know, how they all sort of tie together for you, I think is really, it's really cool. Thanks. Um, and the plants, like I've talked to so many people, um, like the whole talk with Carrie and the first one I did with Renee Nunez, both of them have been really, really focused on plants lately. And I'm, I myself have kind of had that to some degree, not quite as much, but um, I mean, I've been drawing trees just the past few months and I feel like that's partially something that came out of the pandemic when we were all sort of isolated and feeling like what is what really matters and what really makes us feel good. Yeah, and no, totally. Yeah, totally. Being in nature and plants and you know, it's, it's all, you feel that sense of connection and, um, yeah, definitely. Cause like I, I grew up in an apartment. Um, so for us to own a house, like, like, yeah, especially during a pandemic, I'm like, I want to make our home beautiful. I want to make our, you know, our backyard and our, you know, our front yard be like places like, yeah, let's go spend more time outside. And yeah. then same thing in my studio. I mean, it's kind of hard to see I can sort of turn it, but I have like a whole area over there. You can sort of see the plants, but I, that's just, a, I mean, like I have a whole section over there where it's like kind of like a mini gym, but also a, a growing garden that just, I'm yeah. hoping spreads more this way, but over here, it's a little harder just because of, uh, there's too much, too many electronics over here and I don't want to break damage in it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of like, um, like having stations, you know, like in kindergarten where it's like, oh, did, yeah, totally. And, the yeah, math totally. Station and you have like the plant station. There's and a little, yeah, go to the garden and then go, yeah, yeah. Walk, to, walk to the library and get a book over, sit down over here. Oh, totally. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's totally I how my studio is set up. I feel um, like that everybody should arrange their life that way, honestly. I mean, everybody should arrange their life the way that makes sense for them. But I just feel like there's so much um, value to just being able to like live, have your day, like, now I'm in the mood for this. I'm just going to walk to this corner and now I'm going to do, I mean. Um, yeah. Just, and then my, and then my studio looks out like the there's windows. All the time. I look out into our backyard. So I'm constantly just thinking like, what kind of, what changes can I make to the landscape that'll make it uh, have a better flow too. So I'm all, I don't know. I'm just always just like thinking about how to change the landscape out there. And I think that kind of, you know, a lot of that has just been in my work, like the work that I'm making right now. Um, just thinking about those changes to like, you know, that I'm making here and like, you know, what needs to change in my own work to like, you know, to reflect that. So you said that you're no longer going to be the director at Lamplight. And I had seen a post recently where you announced that and said you were moving on to some other projects. Um, is that something? Are those projects like um, just personal art related or are they other um, involvement in other art groups or? Uh, it's honestly just personal art projects because yeah. um, serving as the director is essentially a volunteer position. Like there, there's no, yeah, I have not, you know, there's no director at Clamp Light has ever been uh, gotten paid to do it. Yeah. Um, I, I finally made it. Um, so we're at, I finally, we, I was able to talk to the current residents. And so that way this year I'm, um, I'm sharing my studio um, instead of having a full size studio. That way by bringing that one other person in, it allowed me not to have to pay rent anymore as like, you know, in exchange for me staying on as director. Um, yeah. I mean, it's been, at the end of this year, it'll be it'll be, have been four years uh, where I have served where I've served as a director, and um, I just feel like um, you know it's just time to kind of move on. I really just want 
to spend a hundred of my a hundred percent of my time in the studio. Um, that's what I do now. I mean, I was uh, running an Airbnb out of our guest house for also for about three and a half years. Then I shut that down last year because also it was just it was successful, but also it was also taking up a lot of my time. And I felt like um, you know, like back when my daughters were staying at when I was uh, taking care of my daughters, both of them up to the point where they went to pre-K at the age of four, I kept thinking like, okay, one day well, when they're both in school, I'm going to have so much free time. But then at when the time came for them to go to school, I started the Airbnb and I joined Clamp Light, like pretty, like a couple of years within each other. So that free time that I thought I had never really came. And I, and I'm, and I know I make a lot of work, but to me, I feel like I'm not even like a hundred, I'm not making a, as much as I want to be making or as much as I could be making if I just had all my time to really just focus on my work. And, and um, it's honest, I'll be honest, it's made um, my personal income a little, uh, you know, things get a little tight here and there, but um, at the same time, I'm much, I'm just much happier having this much more freedom in my days to where I can spend two hours landscape in our yard, go practice a little baseball, and then still have six, seven hours in the studio. So, I mean, yeah. it's just really nice. But there's someone who's going to, uh, Caroline Gonzalez is one of the current residents there now. Um, so she is going to be the one to take over. And um, she, I feel really excited for her. Um, uh, she's going to, I think she's going to do great. So we already have like uh, what we're, yeah, we already kind of started talking about things that way. It'll be a nice transition when, when I leave, it'll, you know, things will be nice and smooth. And, uh, but yeah, I'm, I think it'll be a really, uh, yeah, really great for her. I feel like four years is a good chunk of time. And you did a lot of that was during the middle of the pandemic. So you had that role in a very challenging time. I, I joined, I joined like at the fall, in the fall of 2020, it was like, yeah, like the pandemic had been on about six months and I joined and uh yeah it was uh it was a lot of fun i mean it gave me an opportunity to show a lot of artists work that i've wanted to been working with uh, that mm -hmm. i wanted you know been wanting to work with um and uh yeah it was it was great but yeah it was four years is uh, a good amount of time <laughs> yeah. yeah um and i'm all for people diving in the deep end if they're able to you know so i'm glad you're you're able to do that um that's good. That's great. Yeah. And I um, also feel like I left it in a better place than it was before. Like I made, I've made a lot of just improvements within the spaces and like, just as far as what's the sort of resources we have within the space. So yeah, I feel like, I don't know, that's what you're supposed to do. And it like you stay the night somewhere, you clean it up better than you leave it. And so yeah, I feel like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and apply that to the world at large, you know, like wouldn't it exactly. be if we yeah, all did yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, that would be really nice. <laughs>
you know, organizing and curating those, you know, those events. And so, yeah, it's just, uh, there's a lot. I mean, San Antonio, I feel like it's just, I've been here for almost 12 years and I feel like the art scene here is just like, it's just, it just keeps expanding. Yeah. Which is, uh, yeah. That's fun, fun, fun to be part of and fun to see. So. Yeah. That's been my observation as well. I mean, I graduated from high school in 1990 and when okay. I left, it was like there, there was, I felt like there was not a whole lot going on. And then mm -hmm. just like all of a sudden it's just been really um, like flowering, blossoming. And it's cool. It's cool to see that happening. I think, I mean, I, th I do see that like, Definitely, I could say the same thing about Austin because I lived in Austin for like mm -hmm. 14 years. And when I first moved there, there was hardly anything going on there. And now there's, I mean, the Austin art scene is kind of insane. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like taking over the, the whole city. You have the West Studio Tour, the East yeah, Studio Tour. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, mean it's... I would say that the visual arts in Austin has sort of um become louder than the music scene in austin which is you know what I, yeah i would agree yeah, yeah for sure i mean and that's part of what that city is known for so um but i think that i mean even in some small towns in texas there's galleries popping up that are actually pretty good galleries you know it's just um it's exciting and it's it's all new and so I don't know like is this a sign of things to come or like what what is that what's behind it I don't I yeah, suspect like, like some of it is the people getting priced out of cities and so they're moving in back to the you know small towns where they're from or they're nearby cities or yeah um because I mean like like Lockhart is a good example I yeah mean, that's a space that has like multiple galleries now yeah. and um yeah, it's, I mean, it's just, I, like, I, I have, have, I've been able to, to work with one of the spaces, Speller, Spellerberg projects and work with the owner, Marty Spellerberg, and I curated six months of programming there. And just, to, and then, so now he's actually, his, his face is like, got a whole like a uh, makeover and there's like more artist studios there. So like, there's just a lot of people who live in those smaller towns, like yeah. right outside of Austin, right outside San Antonio, who don't feel like. I don't know, are, like the big, like the bigger cities are a little too much for them, but they want to be part of a community. So they're like, yeah. okay, there's, here are these smaller towns. Let's do it here because it needs it. I mean. Right. Yeah, it does. Um, and I feel like, I mean, I, I really grew up more in a rural area than a small town, but um, I would absolutely love to like live out in the country again or in a very small town, but there's been a long time where I don't think that I, um, I would have fit into that community. And, um, I think a lot of people could say that, that it hasn't always, they haven't always felt welcome for various reasons. And I know that's like, I'm saying that and I'm, I'm just like feeling certain people in my life, like cringing as I'm saying, <laughs> as I'm saying it. So I'm, I'm with a, like a, an air of caution. Like I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to make it sound like I'm, I'm creating an us versus them kind of scenario. Um, but it's been tense in this state and, you know, there's been a lot of, um, cultural, uh, landmines <laughs> we'll just say. And, um, so like for, for someone like me, who's kind of felt like, well, this is where I'm from. This is like what I'm of in a lot of ways. And I'd love to sort of have that again, but I haven't in the past, like been able to reconcile that with like the life that I want to have and the community that I want to have, um, seeing people do those things in small towns. is like very rewarding for for me to watch that. Um, and I feel like if I feel like that, there's gotta be other people who feel like that, you know? Yeah. I think that's really cool. Another, another small element of, of that, uh, that move into or 
or out of cities. Like there's still a lot going on in the city. So it's not totally like abandoning that, but it's just sort of like, like merging into the rest of the state to some degree. And there's a part of me that like is hopeful that it's kind of bridge building, you know, with communities that haven't always been open mm -hmm. to an, an arts community. Right. Um, so, I mean, time will tell, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about the the work that you do on the concrete? Yeah, sure. About like the labor and work. Yeah, so that series, um, I've kind of changed it a little bit too. So I have, I, I titled it um, the new series. It's actually a whole, so that work as well as some other pieces are now part of what I call my Umspringen series. Okay. Um, Ums, Umspringen which is German for, um, which translate, uh, translates into, to change into something else. Okay. Um, and I actually have recently created about 15 or so new pieces and kind of like, so I've, um, there are still aspects of labor and work in the, in the current body of work, but I'm trying to move a little bit away from that just because, um, or not totally away from it, but I, I've been combining kind of all these elements, like some of these elements of like, um, of the things I was talking about, these re like this body of work, bringing some of those elements into the concrete work. So just because like when I'm thinking about work and labor, um, I know I've made so much work about that in the past, but like mentally, that's just not where I'm at right now. Um, yeah. So I have I have been taking some of those old like old references that I have. Like I have plenty of photographs of of construction workers that I either I've taken myself or people have sent to me and given to me so i'm like you know what let's take a few of those pieces and see if i can find a way to incorporate them still into the work if it makes sense but um so yeah i just want to kind of like um i've been more playful with it too and also just jumping into things that i'm also interested in like um whether it's space exploration whether it's like scientific discoveries i mean i spend a lot more time probably reading about science uh developments in science than i do about art uh yeah. just like thinking about like you know all the uh things that are like you know for example the you know spacex is or nasa is going to take plants to the moon next year for the first time um and just thinking about those sort of things and like um i spend a lot of time talking to my daughters about space because at school they learn about the space station they we come home and end up having conversations about planets and stuff and i'm like you know i, I really enjoy this and I feel like I, I actually have included th those things in my work in the past, but they've been mostly abstracted. Um, and so now I'm like, I need a, enough. I mean, I don't want them. I don't want those ideas to be abstract right now. I want it to be a little bit more just um, uh, literal. So I've been, been incorporating aspects of that space exploration, a little bit of um, incorporating things about work, um, still referencing using Mario as a pop culture reference as a reference, but I'm kind of combining all those things to make to make the concrete series a new series within itself. I didn't realize that you had that interest in space exploration and all of that, because that is a huge thing for me. Like, I love. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I did a, a series of Martian landscapes like okay. around 2018, I think it was, that are just very straightforward watercolors. And you would not know they were from Mars unless you read the titles. Yeah. One of my concrete pieces is actually just called Mars Horizon, but it's like it's just a drawing of a Mars landscape because it just yeah. looks like it, it looks sort of similar. I mean, sort of familiar in a way. Like yeah. people might think, but it's like, no, this is this is not. And but I've also I've been take I've been looking at a lot of images from NASA and like of the uh, Mars uh, was it Mars Discovery or the Mars Rover and like I like how like there's so many so many photos available online mm. and I, I'm trying to I'm I'm also trying to incorporate some of the photos where like you can see the vehicle in its own photos it's almost like it's yeah. constantly taking a selfie you know what I mean yeah, so it's like you. here's Mars but I the machine am still here and like you could see its wheel or something so I just I don't I don't, I don't know just thinking about those sort of things I'm I'm just that's that's where I'm at right now mentally. It's right. like I don't know. I'm just I just I, I, I mean I, yeah. 
I know that that in and of itself can be a hot button topic because, right. you know, I've definitely heard the perspective and uh, that like, there's so much going on here. Why, why worry about that? And also like, if we're trashing our planet, are we going to do the same thing to this other planet? And I think those are really valid um, things to bring up. Um, I mean, but at the same we're... time, I feel like it's, it's incredibly like awe inspiring and um, like joy inducing. Like the fact that we're at the stage where we're just like starting to explore other planets. And mm -hmm. if all goes well and we don't trash all these other planets on our own and we're still here hundreds of years from now and as fast as it's all moving, you know, um, like I feel like this stage is a really critical one of of like going from being earthbound to to not being earthbound mm -hmm. um, and you know like the moon landing that was 90, 1969 it was just a few years before I was born it's just like um if I look at at the progress that's happened in my lifetime it's just crazy it's but crazy it's really yeah cool. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that like all that was done you know like um with heavy machinery basically like it wasn't digital it wasn't like computerized and yeah now we have this other technology it's just um it's fascinating to me and and yeah, I'm also humbling like I feel like it really oh no a totally reminder of our place and in the universe. I, I think that's the most important aspect of it is like the reminder to like, just think about that perspective of it. Yeah. Just yeah. the perspective of it. Like we're just here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like, I don't know. Just like, I think sometimes people just need that reminder in itself of like, we're just this tiny little dot over here. And that's another dot over there that we now can see up close. I mean, right. just, and uh, why not be excited about that? People get excited about sports teams winning, get excited, right. you know, get excited exactly. about all these sort of random things. And less money. But it's like, yeah. Than, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I mean, and there's the potential, like, depending on what, on what we learn as we um, explore these different areas, like, um, altering our perception of ourselves and our origins i don't feel like that's a wasted effort at all to seek in that way yeah i agree and like i hear so much about like during the space race back you know the 60s or whatever how how much it influenced that culture that era and all the things that happened you know that's when you had the civil rights like there was just a lot of things happening in that time that were in, not just in, but that were you know not wholly inspired by the space race but i'm like here we are again in that era at yeah. a different time and so why not why not let it inspire people because maybe the more we're talking about planets and, and people it just gives people that you know are just maybe well, they will start thinking about you know their the planet we actually live on and you know i don't know it's just like i don't know i hate i, I don't like when people tell you you shouldn't i don't know whatever right, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you on that so. <laughs> um yeah, I, I it's very intense out there, you know, like it's there's a lot going on. And so I don't I don't I try not to fault anyone for um, having um, for feeling things deeply and passionately that sometimes might be projected onto others and other people's interests and um, things that, you know, feel important to one person that may not feel important to another person. Um you know, it, it's, it's, um, everybody's going through their things and, right. um, and I've just, I've just learned in my life to not take things personally for the most part, you know, but, um, but I'm always excited <laughs> when I'm, when I encounter someone else who's like as excited <laughs> as I am about all that stuff. So, um, cause I, cause you know, I do feel like there's a growing interest in it, but at the same time, there's kind of a loud backlash against uh -huh. it as well. You said you went to University of Houston, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and was art was 
that your degree? Or? Yeah. So I'll I'll actually start from the beginning. So before going to university to University of Houston, where I got my that's where I got my bachelor's of fine art. Uh -huh. But before, like right after high school, way back in uh, 1999, I went uh, to Washington University in St. Louis for two years. Okay. I was enrolled. Uh, I was there at, at the w Washu School of Art because um, I originally thought I might go into like advertising design. Yeah. Um, but then after taking just a couple of class, computer graphics class, I realized I did not want to sit in front of a computer my whole life. Um, and so I, I uh, spent most of my time there really just mastering my drawing skills um, while I was there. Uh, but then it wasn't until I was at U of H um, I was like, at the, so I like there was a, there was a gap, but um, where I was going to community college for a while to knock out basics. That's for for a good for a little while, um, like three different colleges. Um, but it wasn't until I was at U of H. Um, that's where I that's where I was encouraged to finally start painting. So like it was at, I was at age twenty six. I really I at least for myself never really painted. I maybe maybe painted one painting in one high school class and one painting at Wash U, but I don't feel like either one of those were my true first mm -hmm. paintings. Um, but like one of my professors, David Hickman, who has passed away, um, I took a color class and an illustration. And in the illustration class, he was like, look, you're great at drawing because I was drawing with just just all sorts of things. He was like, but if you want to be a serious artist, you need to you need to learn how to paint. And then, so I took it upon myself to teach myself how to paint. And after making one painting, I was like, oh crap, I know how to paint. Mm -hmm. And so I, at the time I was actually at U of H, I was there um, planning to get like a, a degree in like edu like to like uh, art education, to be able just to be a, a teacher. But then I was like, oh, you know what? I'm switching my major to painting and I want to try to figure out how to be an artist. And so basically since then, which was like 2007, I've been, you know, trying to make it work ever since then. Yeah. That was too big a bite and my hair got in my mouth. 